One day, a terrorist, a gangster, a villain, a demonic man named Nahash the Ammonite invaded Jabesh Gilead, which was a Jewish outpost cut off from the rest of Israel. And if you want to understand woke, it is embodied in every word that Nahash the Ammonite said to the people because they had no hope to fight him. They would not survive the single battle against him. They were so outnumbered. So the elders of Jabesh Gilead walked out and surrendered and said, we're going to allow you to enslave us. Let us live, but we're your slaves. That was never enough for Nahash the Ammonite. It wasn't enough. He was spoiling for a fight. And his hatred was so unbridled, so complete, that he said this, no, I'm not going to let you be enslaved to me. Because here was the second addendum to their request. We'll be your slaves. Just give us seven days, one week. Let us choose spokesmen who will go over to Gibeah of Saul and ask for help. And he said, okay, on one condition, that after seven days, I want you to come out and I'm going to gouge out your right eye and I'm going to disfigure you. And he did it because he wanted to shame Israel. Today, we have heard a lot. Yesterday, today, and in this conference, we've heard a great deal about what woke is doing to America. But we are never going to change it until we get to the level of understanding how brutally evil it is. When an obese man, let me say it again, when an obese man with a beard in a dress is reading to children, and the adults, allegedly parents, are have that, that distant gleam of somebody with counterfeit illumination, is staring, realizing this is being done to disfigure childhood. Not just emotionally, but now surgically. It's not for the children. Those children have been sacrificed at the altar of the well-being of the obese man. That's how evil it is. And when I talk to a person that can openly confess that they're a Democrat <laughs> and not mutter it, I tell them that I know Trump offends you. I know his tweets offended you. But here's what you're about, and you can't escape this. You can't dress this up. No matter what you do, you can't, you can't put lipstick on a pig and change what it is. You are about the total and complete disfigurement of the children of America. We heard about how they want to kill them after they're born. Now even so later, teachers, Massive numbers of teachers ask a child every day now. They're instructed to do this. The child arrives, kindergarten, first grade, third grade, whatever. What do you feel like today, boy or girl? What do you feel? What do you think you are? What would you like to be called? Second, don't tell your parents what you've decided to call yourself. So now I heard from Shannon Grove, state senator from the state of California. She texted me and said, please pray for me. Virtually every bill before us in California is to empower the state against parents. So now, here's what happened. Mahash the Ammonite has disfigured, decided to disfigure J. Bash Gilead. The devil's doing that to America. I want to destroy marriage. I want to destroy morality. 
I want to destroy, destroy, destroy. I want to tear it all down. Until you face that, absorb that, live that, breathe that, you can't come up against this enemy. You have no right to. It is the complete and total embracing of the degree of evil that is before us that will finally do the job. You know, it's funny, Martin Luther said, I do my best work when I'm mad. I do my best writing when I'm mad. My mind is clearer when I'm mad. So here's the question I'm gonna ask you today. And you know what I know? I'm not preaching in the choir today. Many, many people, because of the enormous influence of Andrew Womack Ministries and the growing audience of Truth and Liberty, thousands beyond these walls are gonna hear what I'm about to say. And here's what I'm gonna say. What kind of man would you choose to go to Gibeah of Saul You're not going to choose the Christian motivational speaker because their very presentation is, de is denying what's going on. Can you imagine the average Christian motivational speaker who when he speaks, you don't know when it's him and when it's a fortune cookie. That man is going to get someone to come back and save your children. Who are you gonna say it? Hi, my name, I'm gonna make up a name for a preacher, Steve Stunning. <laughs> I'm Steve Stunning, God loves you just the way you are. You can't imagine how much he loves you. Hey, we need some help over here. It's not gonna work. You can't send a theologian because the group won't understand it. Who did they pick? I'm gonna say this, they are going to pick men who can bring back an army with them. Now I'm gonna say this, we don't need a crowd, we need the audience to turn into an army. We need the spectators to turn into soldiers. We need to be galvanized, we need everything, nothing is going to stick from this week unless we have whatever they had because when they arrived at Gibeah of Saul, it says in 1 Samuel 11, verse six and seven, that Saul was out in the field plowing and he heard wailing. I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember weeping in church before we outlawed it. Yeah. Weeping, wailing in church. Saul is out there plowing with his prized oxen and he hears this noise. And the noise that he hears, I'm gonna make this real quick, is the people crying out to God, sobbing over the story they've heard. Now of all the things that I wanna change about American Christianity, here it is, right here. Of all the things that I beg you to be different than the others, that I beg you to let go of, how is it that the American Christian church cannot reach the appropriate level of outrage over what's going on in our country. Because what they are doing to our children is exactly what is in this story in 1 Samuel 11. When they got there, the people were wailing. And the Bible tells us that Saul heard it and he asked the question, why are the people weeping? Now I'm gonna destroy a theology. I love doing this part. This is my favorite part. Everybody smile at me. How many of you still love me even though, do you? This is the part I love. We have a real fear of preachers when they get angry. We have a real penchant for loving on and encouraging the ones that are soothing. He bothers me, that bothers me. I don't like what he said, it bothers me. But here's the undercurrent of it. It bothers you because you want the illusion to continue. I'm gonna try that again. I worked that in front of a mirror. I thought I, my movement was gonna get you all excited. Instead, I went over like a pregnant pole vaulter. <laughs> the, 
the reason repentance bothers the American audience, the reason that urgency bothers the American Christian audience, the reason a man like me is written off as being an angry rebel is because they want the illusion to be maintained. Now, when they said that to the people, they couldn't color it, they couldn't break it down, they couldn't put a positive spin on it, and we still have to realize we are at the moment in American history where we are all in. We are either going to see a victory or we are going to cease to exist as a free people. It's now or never. Somebody clap real loud. It's now or never. It's now or never. It's now or never. This is it.